Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Ridge defends Brooks discovery and FC drama erupts. Eric learns Steffi's plan is far greater than hope. On the CBS serial opera Bold and the Beautiful, Steffi Forrester is destroying Hope Logan's career, but it appears that Eric Forrester realizes this goes much beyond rivalry for his granddaughter. When her mother unexpectedly showed up in town, Steffi assured Brooke Logan that she would not be a matchmaker. Thus, from everyone's perspective, she fulfilled her promise. However, did she? Spoilers for Bold and the Beautiful, Eric Forrester learns everything there is to know about Steffi Forrester. On Bold and the Beautiful, Jacqueline McInnes Wood's character Steffi Forrester is a force to be reckoned with at Forrester Creations. According to next week's spoilers, John McCook's character Eric Forrester advises his granddaughter to stop using power moves. However, it seems that this has no effect on her decision. Annika Noel's character Hope Logan is no longer with FC. It appears that her stepsister intends to maintain that arrangement. Eric learns that Steffi's personal problems prevent her from making wise career choices. Next week, a few folks take the initiative to bring this up. Spoilers about Steffi Forrester and Hope Logan from Bold and the Beautiful. Additionally, according to previews for Bold and the Beautiful, Eric sees something else that leads him in a different route. It appears that Eric Forrester believes his granddaughter's recent mischievous behavior involved more than just hope. BMB spoilers, I hope Logan was unable to speak with Edgewise. She wouldn't let the subject down until Steffi Forrester entered the room and saw Hope Logan, dressed in lingerie, crashing into Finn. Hope felt as though the co-CEO reminded her every day to avoid John Finnegan, Tanner Nolan. Then Hope stumbled unintentionally and ended up on top of Finn. When Steffi walked in on this, she was able to catch an eyeful thanks to the perfect timing. However, Steffi Forrester wasn't quite as irate as one might anticipate when she chastised Hope for apparently cheating on her husband once more. Furthermore, she had little interest in listening to Hope's justification. Rather, the Forrester daughter seemed relieved that things had finally reached this stage. Thus, in a somewhat robotic voice, she reminded Hope that she had warned her about the consequences of approaching Finn once more. She once stood there yelling, shame on you, like a mother might chastise a small kid. Spoilers for Bold and the Beautiful, Granddaughter Responds to Her Father According to previews for Bold and the Beautiful, at the end of next week, Eric Forrester will be beckoning Steffi Forrester. At this point, he asks Steffi to re-evaluate Hope Logan's termination. She seems unyielding, though. However, spoilers indicate that Eric's eyes are opened by something that occurs the following week. He quickly learns the full story of his granddaughter's contentious activities. The Beautiful and the Bold, Eric Forrester Additionally, according to BMB spoilers, Steffi is backed by Rich Forrester, Torsten K. His marriage is therefore in jeopardy. Catherine Kelly Lang's character, Brooke Logan, stands up for her kid. Ridge and Taylor Hayes, Rebecca Budig, are positioned behind Steffi, as you might anticipate. Ridge and Brooke's feelings regarding this will be revealed to Eric. He appears to have a direct view of their relationship's decline. Taylor Hayes is adored by Eric Forrester. However, he also thinks the Logan matriarch is his son's fate, and he loves Brooke. He mentioned this to Ridge on Bold and the Beautiful a few of times recently. BMB spoilers, Eric recognizes Hope Logan as collateral damage in Steffi's ploy next week's events suggest that Eric will come to the conclusion that Steffi is only using Hope. His granddaughter is aware that Ridge and Brooke will be at odds if Hope is fired. Taylor's daughter is aware that Ridge is the one who caused her mother's broken heart syndrome. What if Eric discovers that Steffi did play matchmaker, but not in a way that was obvious enough for people to notice? He would be furious that she not only interfered with her father's life, but also caused a disturbance in the family business. Steffi was aware that firing Hope Logan would negatively impact the relationship between her father and Brooke. Eric Forrester will probably be furious if he learns that his granddaughter's ultimate objective was to separate her father and Brooke. Furthermore, based on what the bold and the beautiful spoilers for the upcoming week indicate, if this was indeed Steffi Forrester's strategy to get her father away from Brooke, it was successful. 
Next week, there will be repercussions from manipulating the cards to remove Hope Logan as her target. Therefore, it's possible that Steffi Forrester fired Hope Logan from the CBS soap opera with her parents' future in mind. Zen's indignation, Carter's retaliation, and Eric's Hope intervention all fail. According to previews for the upcoming two weeks of The Bold and the Beautiful, which run from November 4th to November 15th, Steffi Forrester's decision to fire Hope Logan will continue to have an impact. Ridge Forrester's endorsement of Steffi will cause Brooke Logan to respond incredulously and eventually angrily. Brooke will press Ridge to override Steffi during the week of November 4th to 8th, since she will clearly not believe Hope meant to woo John Finn Finnegan. Ridge won't agree to it, especially if Hope isn't wearing lingerie while she parades around the design office. By keeping her promise to keep Hope and Carter Walton's hush-hush affair a secret, Brooke might make matters more difficult. Hope's humiliation and terrible career loss will make Carter furious. Carter will be eager to get some Forrester vengeance because he will be upset over all the criticism he received regarding his proposal for a large luxury company. When Steffi and Finn reunite, they will reaffirm their commitment to one another. Steffi will become passionate with Finn and reassure him that they are still on good ground because she doesn't hold Hope's behavior against him. Speaking of being impassioned, Hope will have a thrilling turning point with Carter, so all of her turmoil will lead to something positive. They should share their first bedtime together when Hope returns to Carter's house with him. Additionally, according to BMB teasers, there will be some love confessions, thus Carter and Hope's romance can pick up speed overnight. They will have to confront the challenging truth of their own relationship once they return to Brooke and Ridge. Brooke will always have Hope's back, and Ridge will always have Steffi's. Ridge and Brooke might not last as a couple if they are unable to recognize the value of such familial ties. When John McCook's character Eric Forrester learns about Hope's termination, he will attempt to persuade Steffi not to fire her permanently from Forrester Creations. Steffi, however, will maintain that the choice has been made and will be pleased with the decision to keep Hope off the property. Regarding Zen Forrester Dominguez, it seems sense that he would be upset over Steffi interrupting Hope's line. Zen will complain to Steffi about her decisions penalizing more than just Hope because he has been creating Hope's most recent collection. Will Spencer will then ask Electra Forrester about her life and start being flirtatious in an attempt to test the waters. Will Mike decide to intensify his pursuit after Electra flirts back. He will confide with Katie Logan and read a heartfelt letter from Luna Nozawa at Bill Spencer's estate. Though Katie will mostly see Bill as the true victim, Bill's heart will still ache for Luna and Poppy Nozawa, Romy Park. When Luna shows up for a visit to the prison, Poppy will surprise her by giving her daughter some important updates. Is there any update on Luna's case and her likelihood of being placed in a mental health facility? Perhaps this has to do with Poppy forgiving Luna, or perhaps it has to do with another potential father figure. In any case, Poppy will arrive with a message for Luna, so it will be intriguing to watch what she shares. There will still be November sweeps going on over the week of November 11th to 15th. We'll see if Sheila Sharp, Kimberlyn Brown, engages in any mischievous behavior because this could be an excellent time for her to cause problems. In the future, Carter's revenge scheme against the Foresters will cause him some difficulties of his own. Will Carter be able to hold Ridge and Steffi accountable for what they did to Hope? Lastly, by that time, Ridge and Brooke's already tense relationship can worsen. We'll give you more predictions about what is ahead for these ex-partners because this could be Taylor Hayes' chance to reassure Ridge and draw him in. According to spoilers for The Bold and the Beautiful, the upcoming two weeks will feature a number of intense conflicts and touching moments, so check in for lots of fantastic episodes. In the latest twist at Forrester Creations, Hope Logan found herself in a humiliating situation that no one saw coming. What started as a routine meeting quickly spiraled into a public spectacle as Hope's work was openly scrutinized, and a shocking new narrative emerged, Steffi had manipulated a minor mistake into a full-blown scandal to discredit Hope. Fueling the tension further, Carter Walton, the company's trusted COO, appeared to side with Steffi, pushing a new agenda that might just leave Hope out of Forrester creations for good. The incident, dubbed Hope's humiliating plank by the press, became the latest power play in an ongoing feud, testing the loyalties of everyone at Forrester Creations and sending shockwaves through the family and company. The entire situation stemmed from a minor misstep in one of Hope's recent design presentations, which she later described as a simple misunderstanding.
However, Steffi seized on the opportunity to spin the narrative in her favor. During the meeting, Steffi pointed out the discrepancy in Hope's design choices, arguing that they didn't align with the company's brand image. Normally, such issues could have been handled privately, but Steffi escalated the matter in front of the entire board, adding public pressure to an already uncomfortable situation. She claimed that Hope's line was deviating from the Forrester image and suggested that Hope's focus on trendy, socially conscious fashion was out of touch with the heritage of Forrester creations. Steffi's critique was less about fashion and more about casting doubt on Hope's competence, implying that Hope was losing control of her line and was a liability to the company. Hope was visibly shaken by the ambush, but she maintained her professionalism, attempting to defend her vision. She explained that hope for the future was about modernizing the Forrester brand, attracting younger demographics, and bringing the company into the 21st century with sustainable and ethical fashion. Yet every point hope raised was met with calculated rebuttals from Steffi, who painted Hope's line as frivolous and inconsistent with the company's values. The scene turned more personal with each remark Steffi made, and Hope's frustration mounted as she struggled to maintain her composure. The line between constructive feedback and a personal attack was crossed as Steffi slipped in subtle jabs, all while feigning concern for the company's welfare. To everyone in the room, it was clear, Steffi was more interested in discrediting Hope than in solving any perceived issues. As if Steffi's attack wasn't enough, Carter Walton entered the fray, delivering a blow that blindsided Hope. As COO, Carter was typically a neutral party, known for mediating disputes within the company rather than exacerbating them. But in this case, he sided with Steffi, supporting her argument that the hope for the future line lacked cohesion with the company's brand. Carter's alignment with Steffi shocked those present, especially given his long-standing working relationship with Hope. Even more surprising was that Carter had recently praised Hope's work in private, telling her that her vision was bringing a breath of fresh air to Forrester creations. For him to now back Steffi's critique suggested that something deeper was at play. Carter went on to advocate for a back-to-basics approach for Forrester, emphasizing traditional values and heritage over innovation, a move that would place Steffi's vision at the center and relegate Hope's contributions to the sidelines. The implications of Carter's stance were significant. As COO, his endorsement gave weight to Steffi's accusations, and his influence with the board could sway decision-making. Hope felt betrayed, both by Steffi's relentless criticism and by Carter's unexpected alliance with her. Rumors soon spread among the employees and executives that Carter had his own ambitions tied to Steffi's plans. Some speculated that he saw aligning with Steffi as a strategic way to gain more influence at Forrester Creations, positioning himself closer to the core leadership by supporting the current CEO's vision. Others believed that Carter's loyalty was more complex, rooted in his long-standing desire to see Forrester Creations preserve its original identity. Meanwhile, as Hope grappled with the fallout of her public dressing down, she discovered that Steffi's attack might have been premeditated. After the meeting, a few colleagues who sympathized with Hope quietly informed her that Steffi had been discussing her concerns with certain board members well before the meeting. Steffi's so-called concern over Hope's line was nothing new, it was a pretext she had been cultivating for weeks. The goal, it seemed, was not merely to critique Hope's line but to humiliate her, undermining her credibility and painting her as someone who didn't belong in Forrester's executive ranks. For Hope, the realization was crushing. It was one thing to face a rival's criticism but another to know that the entire spectacle had been orchestrated with the intention of making her appear weak and out of place. Following the incident, the company's inner circle was rife with speculation. Some employees felt that Steffi's behavior was over the top, calling her approach unprofessional and unbecoming of a CEO. Others feared that siding with Hope could put their own positions at risk, recognizing that Steffi was consolidating power and that her alliance with Carter signaled a new regime in which loyalty to Steffi was paramount. Eric Forrester, the company patriarch, was particularly disturbed by the discord. While he had always been proud of Steffi's leadership, he questioned whether this power play was worth the damage it caused to family unity. For Eric, Forrester Creations was more than a company, it was a symbol of family unity and a legacy he hoped would continue for generations. Watching Steffi undermine Hope so ruthlessly left him worried about the price of success. Hope, meanwhile, faced a difficult decision. On one hand, she felt that standing her ground and fighting for her line was essential to maintaining her self-respect and proving that she belonged at Forrester Creations. 
On the other, the public humiliation and betrayal she'd experienced left her questioning if she could ever truly thrive in an environment where her contributions were so easily dismissed. She considered the possibility of leaving Forrester Creations altogether, perhaps to start her own brand where she could exercise her creative freedom without the shadow of family politics. It was a daunting thought, but the recent events had highlighted how stifling and toxic her position at Forrester had become under Steffi's leadership. Outside the company, the fashion press caught wind of the drama, dubbing it the Hope Plank Incident. Reports detailed the supposed rift between Steffi and Hope, speculating on the future of Hope for the future and what Steffi's vision would mean for Forrester creations. The press coverage only deepened the divide, with fashion insiders questioning whether Forrester creations would remain relevant if it sidelined forward-thinking initiatives like Hope's line. The bad press painted Steffi as an uncompromising and potentially regressive leader, one who couldn't accommodate modern ideas within her leadership. This public narrative sparked a new layer of conflict, as Steffi realized that her approach might have backfired, impacting the company's image negatively in the eyes of the fashion world. In the days that followed, Brooke Logan, Hope's mother, entered the fray, determined to defend her daughter. She met with Ridge and Eric, pointing out that the family feud was harming not only Hope but the brand's integrity. Brooke's protective instincts were in full force as she lambasted Steffi's tactics, urging the Forrester men to recognize the damage being done. She argued that the family brand should have room for differing perspectives and that, by shutting out Hope, Steffi was stifling the company's potential for growth. Ridge found himself in a precarious position, understanding both sides yet increasingly uncomfortable with the hostility and divisiveness that had emerged within the family business. Ultimately, the incident left Forrester Creations divided, with employees uncertain about the future direction of the company. The alliance between Steffi and Carter, though effective in asserting Steffi's authority, was viewed by some as overly rigid, prioritizing power over the company's inclusive legacy. Hope, left reeling from the incident, grappled with the choice between staying to fight for her vision or striking out on her own. As tensions simmered, the fate of Forrester creations hung in the balance, and the family was left to reckon with the true cost of ambition, rivalry, and betrayal. The Hope Plank incident would go down in company history as a turning point, one that forced everyone to confront their loyalties and decide what mattered most, their family, their vision, or their pride.